Today I have the Galaxy A13 5G, model A136U. I haven't encountered this phone before, but it already looks a lot like every other A series that comes across my desk. This one has a shattered OLED, but the glass is intact. By holding it to the light just right, you can see discolored splotches under the glass. This causes the screen to stop displaying entirely. This one doesn't require heat to open, but I do need to remove the SIM tray so it doesn't snap in half. With the SIM removed, I'll slip my pry tool in the seam between the screen bezel and the back panel. Nothing but plastic clips hold this panel in place. Some persistent popping will get this back panel off, and this phone is already feeling strikingly similar to the Galaxy A12 I repaired a bit ago. The fingerprint reader is built into the power button, so I know there's a ribbon running out to the board that I should avoid ripping. It looks like they've made some changes, though not very many. Unlike the A12, this connector has a little metal retaining clip over it to keep it from disconnecting when you inevitably drop this phone. There are seven Phillips screws that secure the top panel in place. This is one more screw than last generation's. As usual, Samsung has marked a pry point for popping this panel off safely. Thanks, Samsung. Here's the important part, disconnecting the battery. Down at the bottom, there are seven more identical screws that hold the lower antenna cover over the charging port. Again, there are two pry points marked, one to the left and one to the right. You can safely pick whichever feels better to you. Here's the new part I'll be using. It's also the part that most shops and do-it-yourselfers should be using. It's a replacement frame with the display pre-installed into it. This greatly reduces the overall repair time and increases the overall quality of the repair itself. Now I'll remove the single short black screw at the top of the main board next to the selfie camera. This is the only screw that keeps the board attached to the frame. Once the main display ribbon is disconnected, the top logic board is free to come out. I'll leave the antennas attached to reduce the risk of breaking them when disconnecting from the board. Back to the bottom, I'll disconnect the extension ribbon from the charging board, and then remove the second short black screw that holds it to the frame. The board can then be lifted out and set aside. It's time to start taking out the small components to transfer to the new frame, starting with the main loudspeaker. Back to the top, again Samsung thought ahead and every component has a dedicated pry point. I'll get this old coin style vibration motor pulled out from the notch on the left. The ear speaker has a pry point to the right of the top gold contact on the right side. I'll move the old frame over to the heating mat and start cooking the battery off the permanent adhesive that holds it in. And while it heats up, I can focus on building up the new frame. The vibration motor gets a fresh dab of adhesive and is placed in the new housing. The earpiece lines up perfectly at the top. And finally, the main loudspeaker at the bottom is fitted into place. The boards are ready to go in the new frame as well. Be sure to replace the black screws that hold them down. Routing the antennas into the trench is super important to prevent it getting pinched when the back panel is snapped on. The red wire goes below the white wire. Back to the heating mat, this battery should be nice and toasty by now. I'll drown it with some isopropyl alcohol to soften the permanent adhesive Samsung used to keep it down. A few short bursts of pressure from a fry tool will make short work of the weakened adhesive without bending the battery pack. After applying a fresh strip of double-sided tape, and it really doesn't take much, the battery can be laid in its new home. Now time for some quick reassembly. Both panels need to be screwed down over the boards. With all that done, the last step is reconnecting the fingerprint reader and power button, as well as replacing the small metal retainer clip over the top. With some satisfying pops, the rear panel is once again attached to this phone, and it should be ready to go after some testing. Thanks for sticking around. If you enjoyed this video or it helped you repair a phone, let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to subscribe for more repair videos coming soon. See you next time.